Well, our political analyst Michael Yaki is here, and I know you've been talking about this all weekend. So today, more talk about getting the feds involved. Right. Eric Holder saying, hey, I share your concern, but is that likely? Well, the fact is that most of these cases involving where race may be, in, in, may be involved, federal government tends to hang back a little bit and see what the state state will do, the state prosecution here with the non, not guilty plea. You now see a lot of pressure by the NAACP, the Congressional Black Caucus. There's a huge petition right now at the whitehouse.gov uh, for people asking the federal government to get involved. And, and it would be a civil rights It'd charge be, it would be a criminal. what they're it would, yeah, saying. It would be under the Federal Civil Rights Act under the criminal section where where you basically need, it would basically be a hate crime, you need specific intent to willfully decide to harm someone based on the fact of the color of their skin. There's some question whether or not, certainly some of the jury members at least have been reporting saying they didn't think race was a big case in this, and then again, the, the prosecution never really yeah. stressed that well, as much. Well, you had a six-person jury that did not apparently right. find that to be an issue. So could it be a stretch to expect it to happen on the federal level? Well, I think a year ago, uh, Attorney General Holder basically said it's going to be a very high bar to clear. You need it can't just be reckless. It can't be negligent. There has to be very specific willful intent. Now, if they if they decide to go a little bit less, not in terms of murder, but in terms of harm, false imprisonment, uh, capture, maybe they have an opportunity. But the, but Holder's going in the hot seat. He's speaking before the NAACP convention tomorrow in Orlando. Yeah, so he, he's going to hear more about it. All right. So the the defense saying today, look, that has not been, uh, you know, a, a, an issue. At least that has not been a focus. Why bring this up now? Well, I think that they're, they're probably there's more to it than that. When you look at some of his previous 911 calls, uh, it seemed that there was a pattern that he was basically targeting people of color in terms of his concern and prowling. Uh, the fact is, is that uh, that's that's it's still going to be hard to, to say in this specific instance it was only because of Trevon's Martin race. It may still be, but then the question is going to be, did he carry that all the way through? What was he intending to do? Because again, I don't think on on the murder charge itself, it's going to be hard because what you found in Florida is that there were only two witnesses really to this event, and one of them was dead. So it's going to be very hard to, to claim that that specific instance was a result of a specific hate crime. The pursuit, however, that's a different story. Okay, so Michael, you know that there could be a civil lawsuit. What's the burden of proof there? It's much It's much less. It's still only a six-person jury in Florida. It's preponderance of the evidence, and it's, and it's what's called a comparative fault state like California, which is if two people get involved in something, they weigh who was more culpable in this. And I think this is where this is where Zimmerman has a lot more exposure because he obviously initiated this incident. Again, in, in the criminal law context, the, the tragedy of, of the Trevon Martin case is that you can. Ba Florida law basically says you can pursue someone, provoke them, get into a fight, and then if you think you, it's getting out of hand and you use a gun to defend yourself, you win. Uh, but in a civil case, the fact that he initiated all this, uh, I think the burden of proof is going to be harder for him to win because it's just a preponderance. It's 50, essentially 51% of the jury would have to decide that they think he was the cause of, of Trevon Martin's death. Okay, you brought up stand your ground. Do you think we're going to be seeing people reviewing these laws? Is that likely? Well, I think, well, first of all, I'm a Part of me, part of my other life is I'm on the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, and I actually initiated an investigation nationwide into stand your ground laws that the commission is doing. Other people are looking at it as well. And the fact of the matter is, it's not just stand your ground; it's gun control as well. The President Obama, I think, said it well today: is that it's 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 about searching searching the American soul about how the fact that an unarmed young man was killed basically because of the free access that someone has to a gun. If if George Zimmerman didn't have a gun, he probably wouldn't have pursued Trayvon Martin. He probably would have just called the police, done what neighborhood watch leaders do. But the fact that he had a gun gave him, I believe, the ability in his mind to follow him, pursue him, whatever happened, and then the tragedy that yeah, ensued. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing from a lot of people. If he, bottom line, he shouldn't have had a gun. Right. Aside from everything else. I think that's that's what that's what the real searching question. I think people are going to have to look at is not just stay on your ground, but the, someone having a gun in this. Instance. All right, and a lot of states do have a stand your ground. That's what they do too. indeed. All right, thank you, Michael. You're we'll welcome. be checking in with you again. Uh, a man in has been killed in Arkansas and other.